okay now we will go with some objective uh, dash promotes rbc formation i'll repeat the question dash promotes rbc formation okay what's the meaning of rbc it is red blood cells yes it is what red blood cells it is very very important constituent of the blood we all or we all know that i don't know what's wrong with my pronunciations it's not all it's all only okay so what is that what promotes rbc formation see options are given over here is it lead no not at all silicon no silicon is also not there cobalt and iodine so cobalt is a correct answer actually you know vitamin b12 okay and i won't be going in detail but still you should know this that in vitamin b12 cobalt is present and this is uh, like cobalt it initiates or it increases or it is responsible for the uh, uh, formation of the uh, rbcs we can uh, say that it helps in the formation of the rbc so the objective one okay first okay only one objective is given so no need to write this objective i'll just write the correct answer over here it is cobalt okay c o b a l t it is cobalt which is used in the uh, not used it helps in the formation of the rbc okay helps in the formation of r b c okay now the next question is it's uh, again uh, one word or very short answer type question now the next is name two gaseous non metal okay name two gaseous non metal question number is one yeah so many are there chlorine okay oxygen nitrogen o2 n2 i can write even cl2 okay so cl2 o2 n2 what are these these are the non metals which are which are present in the form of the gas this a quick revision name the non metal which is present in uh, the solid form at room temperature so and which has got luster also so it, it is what iodine the one which is present in the liquid form only one which is bromine don't forget it okay now the next one or the next question is that only name a non metal which found which is found in liquid state so just now we have discussed okay now name a metal that is found in liquid state see non metal in liquid state bromine okay metal in liquid state it's mercury okay so we have discussed this no need to write over there okay now next one name two metals which are used for electroplating i repeat the question name two metals which are used for electroplating now we all have studied electroplating just now also we revise what is electroplating whether where the covering or the one metal is allowed to like it is um, covering is done on the another metal with the help of the process of what with the help of the which process electrolysis so just we want to give two examples over here so it can be gold silver and aluminum also okay now come to the next one third one which non metal is used for purification of water which non metals sorry which non metal it is which non metal is used for purification of water we all know it is none other than chlorine chlorine is used for what purification of water okay now 
the next is short answer type questions ok to begin with um, why do we use aluminium for making electrical transmission wire ok again I will read this why do we use aluminium for making electrical transmission wires why do we use it again the simple reason is it is a good conductor it is ductile ok uh, question number is what this one was uh, this one was A this one is B ok so why what is the question now where it, uh, where it is where it has gone why do we use aluminum for making electrical transmission wire because it is what good conductor because it is good conductor and ductile ok now next one next question is ok this page is also completely over come to the next page ok which property see it is the same question same time of a question which we have discussed many a time just the language is changed huh? some funny language it is which property must a substance possess for it to be a possible to make thin wires of the material same everybody knows but just see how the question is twisted which property must a substance possess for it to be possible to make thin wires for the material so what it is it is ductility it is what again ductility ok this is first one now come to the second one which is the hardest known natural substance ok again I am reading it which is the large hardest huh? which is the hardest known natural substance ok we all know diamond is the hardest substance we all know diamond is the hardest substance and the one more part is given also give its uses so it is used in what jewelry it is used in we have done it it is used in cutters also I am not able to write over here ok now next part is next is third one name a non metal name a non metal which conducts heat and electricity ok also give its uses just now iska bhai hai na so what is that third one name a non metal which conducts electricity is what graphite uses electrodes and pencil ok what is formed this one is interesting what is formed two parts are given a when carbon is burned in sufficient oxygen ok this is fourth so what is the condition a when carbon is burned in sufficient what it is oxygen ok and B is when it is burning insufficient oxygen ok so what is burning carbon ok so when carbon is burning burning means what it is reacting with what oxygen heat yes now so heat will be liberated so what is formed CO2 this is in general we all know but what happens when insufficient supply of oxygen is there ok when for burning of carbon 
proper supply okay for burning of carbon when proper supply of oxygen is not given that means when carbon is more and oxygen is less then what will happen then what is going to happen just try to find out what is going to happen over here what will be formed 2 CO will be formed that means carbon monoxide this is what carbon monoxide will be formed ok what is going to form over here carbon monoxide ok. So, what happens when carbon is burning in sufficient burnt in sufficient oxygen then what will happen carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will be formed and when carbon is allowed to burn in insufficient oxygen then what will happen carbon monoxide will be formed ok ok. Now next question is ok now come to the next question the question number will be fifth ok the question I know it is of very little space but still I will try to manage over here. Now next question is uh, which metal forms a green coating which which metal forms a green coating just now we have studied copper forms green coating copper forms green coating when it reacts with what it reacts with uh, what uh, carbon dioxide oxygen all get mixed up what is formed then what is that green ox uh, greenish layer what that is called is like of what it is made up of. So, it is copper carbonate and copper hydroxide ok we, we have did uh, we have done this yes now coming to the next one ok this one is done now a uh, big thing is coming describe an activity ok describe an activity to show that motion moisture and oxygen are necessary for rusting to take place just I will rub this board and I will read the question again actually I even I did not understand the way I read. So, this will be again some like uh, not lengthy not uh, very long answers, but still you will have to write 2 3 lines in this let us have a look on these questions. See now pay attention describe an activity ok describe an activity to show that moisture and oxygen both are necessary for rusting to take place again describe an activity ok to show that moisture and oxygen both are necessary for rusting to take place. Now see we have done this but still I will tell you now we can take 3 which number is this this is D ok. So, we will take 3 like this jars ok in 1 we will keep it totally normal like water is there ok it is open ok water is filled and it is kept open and in this iron nails ok in this I have put iron nails. So, it is nothing but very common ordinary condition water is also available and air is also available. Now second part I will add I will keep boiling water ok boiling water see you all remember we have discussed this and we all know boiling water does not have air ok we know that boiling water does not have air even if you are going to keep cold uh, like uh, fish in the cold water but which is boiled ok do not put it in the hot water boiling water obviously it is going to die but the water which is boiled but cold one if you add fish if you keep fish into that 
even the fishes are going to die because the oxygen is not there. So, fishes will not be able to breathe and they are going to collapse. In the same way, we have taken boiling water and I will be adding oil to this. Why the oil is being added over here? Oil is being added over here so that now no air can pass through it. So, this one is what boiling water and on the top of that oil is poured. Now, the third one is here in this I will add silica or anhydrous, anhydrous ok anhydrous see first one is what in this a normal condition is taken everything is uh, there ok here boiling water plus oil and here I have put the nails ok I have put the nails and I can add something which can absorb what water. So, silica or anhydrous calcium chloride. Anhydrous calcium chloride that means it will not allow water to be there and what they will absorb? This will absorb water this is going to absorb water. So, now first case I will take from this side ok vice versa not vice versa from opposite direction ok. So, I will take from opposite direction first one see here what we have it is open it is not closed. So, plenty of air is there ok, but then what is not there moisture is not there whatever moisture is coming it is being absorbed by silica or calcium chloride see once again I will explain you 3 jars are taken in this 3 jars first of all we have added we have kept nails ok. Now, in the first jar pay attention I am going from this side in the first jar I have kept the nails and then I have added silica or anhydrous calcium chloride ok. Now, what is the importance of this anhydrous uh, calcium chloride that it absorbs water, it absorbs water from the air. Now, if you are going to put nails in this ok what will happen it would not rust, why it would not rust because here what is happening air is there, but then moisture is being absorbed it. Now, here boiling water as I explained boiling water does not have uh, air into that and above that we are going to add oil also. So, there will be no chance of uh, air to enter into this beaker. Now, third one is normal. So, you will find that in all these three the third one is the one which is normal uh, condition where the o uh, kept uh, the beaker is kept open. So, even the water is available and air is available. So, this condition in this condition the nails will get rusted, but in the first and second there will be no rusting ok, no rusting will take place because what is there uh, what happens rusting needs both air and water ok. Now, shift to the next one this is quite childish question why is your school bell made up of metal not wood why and I do not want to write this on black blackboard now because we all know it is what it is having metals are sonorous and they have ringing property ok. Now, next one although silver is the best conductor of electricity although silver is the best conductor of electricity yet the electric wires are not made up of silver what could be the reason. See this is question about one I did not write the answer I will write it why school bill made up of metal not wood because metals are sonorous ok. And second one see why see we all know like, like uh, when we talk about electric conductors the best one is what silver, but still uh, we have the best one, but we are not using silver rather we are using copper or sometimes even aluminum why because see this one is also very simple because silver is very what it is very expensive 
it is very costly and so we cannot use it ok. Now come to the next one. Hmm. Now this one is reason behind it ok give reasons. The majority of metals have a high density we have discussed this question but in another way ok. Now what why what is the reason why the uh, this one is give reason ok and this one was what this one was where the metals are sonorous this were hots ok. Now give reason what is the question like why majority of metals have high density I told you yesterday also density is mass upon volume if the more number of molecules are, uh, are, uh, are present in the particular area ok or in the simple language if the atoms are very closely packed to each other then what will happen the density will increase. So, simple reason is because atoms of the metals are very closely packed. What is that? Atoms of the metals are very closely packed and so what is the question? They have high density ok and so they have they have high density. Okay, now come to the next one. What do you mean by tensile strength? Okay, what do you mean by tensile? This one is what two. This one is first. This numbering is taking life. Tensile strength. ok. So, what is the meaning of tensile strength? So, here we have to define tensile strength ok. What is tensile strength? The property of the metal due to which it can be stretched a little without breaking ok. What is tensile strength? This was not there in the topic. See what is there like the metals can be little bit they can they can be uh, stretched ok. They can be increased in volume and while doing this also they do not get broken up ok. This property is known as tensile strength ok. Now come to the next question. Okay. Now again we have one or two objectives in between like it is most metals have dash melting point. I will just repeat it out most metals have dash melting point. So, what should I write low melting point or high melting point? See all these are related atoms are closely packed high density, high density means what like and they are very strong very hard ok. So, what is the case and if it is very strong if the atoms are very see atoms are very closely packed ok. So, what is happening? atoms are I am not explaining you only this answer but a concept atoms are closely packed or close. Then what what will happen density will increase density increase ok. If density increase then what will happen it will become hard. If it becomes hard 
whatever thing is hard it becomes difficult to break the bonds difficult to break it so again melting points become very high okay so all these things are related we don't have to rectify the things if atoms are very closely packed so automatically the density becomes very high and if density is high it becomes hard and if it is hard then melting point also becomes very high okay so our question was the metals or most metals have dash melting point okay dash melting point which melting point does it has it is one high melting point okay high melting point okay come to the second one the process of depositing zinc okay the process of we have done this but just a way of asking is different the process of depositing zinc on iron article is called as okay i'll just read it once again the process of depositing zinc on iron article is known as galvanizing it is known as galvanizing okay now next we have true and false okay it is true or false now read the first one gold is least reactive metal yeah gold is least reactive metal so it is what true it won't react so easily see least reactive again everything uh, once i have written in the chapter only aluminum is one of the least reactive i have written least reactive so least reactive it doesn't means that it won't react only okay i am talking in always the separate we are talking in comparative or comparison is there okay in a comparative way so what is the question here gold so even platinum is the one which won't react okay platinum is one okay so what will happen platinum is one which won't react so now gold is least reactive yeah gold is also least reactive it also won't react next is non metals are malleable and ductile we are very thorough now false oh no non metals are malleable and ductile are they non metals are malleable and ductile it can't be false it is oh ho i'm getting confused just wait okay the question is non metals are malleable and ductile so what it is false because non metals are neither malleable or they are nor they are ductile okay now next one is less reactive metal displaces more reactive metal from its salt solution again i am reading it less reactive metals displaces more reactive metal from its salt solution we have done this uh, in the last lecture n number of times we have done this and we all know that this one is what false why it is false because more reactive metal is going to displace less reactive metal okay it's not like less reactive displacing more reactive it is always more reactive metal will displace less reactive metal from the uh, compound in a displacement reaction okay so now next one to discuss is sodium metal is stored under water oh my god what a tragedy just imagine if sodium is stored in water what will happen children yeah correct it is going to blast okay so it is what false i am not able to write here as usual false okay what is stored under water phosphorus is stored under water what is stored under kerosene uh, sodium is stored under 
kerosene ok. Now next one is pick the only correct choice we will do two from this ok. Metals react with oxygen where will I write? So, I will just have to rub the blackboard again ok. We have read enough about the acidic oxides about the basic oxides ok metal whenever metals and non metals I am talking about they react they form oxide they, they react they burn they react with oxygen ok then what is happening they form oxides when oxides are dissolved in water either they will be forming basic oxides or acidic oxides ok metals always form basic oxides and non metal always form acidic oxides. Now uh, where I was we were on this pick mark the correct choice tick the correct answer ok. Tick the correct answer. Now metals react with oxygen to form ok. Again metal reacts with oxygen to form I am giving you options before giving option I am telling you metals means what they will form non uh, like they will form acidic oxides or basic oxides just have a look in just uh, your thinking process should be uh, like you know should keep on like you should have that much of uh, your thought process should continue you should think so much ok. So, before reading the answers only you should be able to think like what could be the answers ok. Metals react with oxygen to form acidic oxides, basic oxides, neither acidic nor basic oxides and none of this ok. So, what is the thing metals as soon as the metal comes they are going to form basic oxides ok. So, this one is A and the correct answer is second I have to see numbers like anything. So, it is what basic oxides metals always form basic oxides now come to the B one ok. Now, which of the following metals corrode easily I am reading it again which of the following metals corrode easily is it gold is it nickel it is chromium or is it iron I will read it once again gold iron nickel chromium. So, we all know the correct answer is second iron now coming to the next one which of this is most reactive metal 100 times we did it yes no. So, I am not going to write it now ok. Now, enough with this most reactive element is what which one which one is the most reactive element it is sodium where it is kept in the kerosene uh, non metal which is reactive phosphorus where it is kept in the water ok. Can sodium be kept in the water? No, sodium cannot be kept in the water because it is very reactive, it catches it, the, it will it will react with water, yes. Okay. Now, next one. Okay. Now, next one is okay. Name the two may this is answer the following in one word. Okay. This is one word answer, one word answer ok this one is what one word answer. So, name the two main groups of elements name the two main groups of elements what are the two main groups of elements it is metals this is number is what fifth ka a this one is a metals and non metals ok. Uh, next one is
what do we call okay metals do not react with water metals or the metals which do not react easily okay so it is known as what non corrosive metals do not react easily okay with water so it is known as what non corrosive and which reacts very easily very corrosive okay okay now next one is what do you mean by heavy metals what do you mean by heavy metals so what is the meaning of heavy heavy metals those metals which have high density are known as what heavy metals okay now moving to the next one is uh give at least three chemical properties of non metals i'll repeat the question give at least three chemical properties of non metals see in the whole chapter we have discussed only about like na more importance is given to metal so we should talk even you know little bit at least about the non metals also so just have one question last question i am discussing so what is this give three at least three properties of non metals that means uh, three type types of reaction maybe with oxygen maybe with hydrogen maybe with water but it should be with what it should be with non metals so chemical properties now this is the last one which what i'll write to chemical properties of the non metals okay now to take to discuss first of all the property of non metal first of all we will take reaction with oxygen okay we are talking about non metals okay we are talking about the chemical properties of the non metals now we have to take one non metal and we have to show the reaction with oxygen so i can take sulfur sulfur is a non metal i'll make it react with oxygen so what will be formed so2 okay i can take carbon it is again a non metal o2 co2 will will be formed 2c plus o2 give rise to what 2co means what it is sufficient and insufficient carbon dioxide carbon monoxide means what we are talking about we are talking about the properties of non metals in that we are discussing first reaction with oxygen okay so i think three uh, are quite enough if you want to take more it's quite enough now okay now second i can show reaction with okay now i can show here reaction with chlorine okay reaction with chlorine so you can take h2 plus cl2 give rise to 2 hcl okay h2 plus cl2 give rise to 2 hcl okay now for going third one i'll have to rub a bit this is the last part okay so now we will discuss the reaction with hydrogen i will take 
reaction with hydrogen okay so i can write about here h2 plus s so it will give rise to h2 s hydrogen sulfide okay so chemical properties of non metals we have taken three first of all with the oxygen so all the oxides are formed then only one reaction i am taken with chlorine h2 plus cl to give rise to 2 hcl okay and one i have taken with hydrogen so what it is h2 plus s give rise to h2s that means hydrogen sulfide so this was all about the questions which can be formed and which you know you need to prepare about if you really um, try to answer all this question to yourself if you try and practice uh, writing the answers of all these questions i'm pretty sure that you are going to have a good command over this chapter okay hope this chapter this teaching will be quite fruitful to you thank you